Hi. Hi. Testing, testing. We've received over 600 questions from teens all around the world anonymously. I'm here today to give you advice on all things. Let's go. As a, a trans person who has experienced a lot of gender dysphoria and discomfort in my body, it's a really beautiful question to be asking. And I think I've probably had a few partners that would have wanted to know the answers to this question. Your partner's confidence is theirs. So I think it all comes to affirmations before you get into the sex bit. If your partner is not comfortable with having sex with the lights on, don't have sex with the lights on. That is up to your partner to decide. If somebody's not feeling confident about their body, don't draw attention to their body. Especially people who have come from sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse. You need to understand it's not your fault, but don't force them into doing something they're not comfortable with. Loving them, just loving them and loving their body and loving who they are and showing them that, that you know, like there's so much more than their insecurities. Are STIs less easy to catch if the person you're sleeping with is the same gender? STIs are bacteria, so they don't discriminate against anyone. No. No. They don't care if you are really popular, if you're really hot. STIs can be caught regardless of gender. Always use barrier protection. Particularly for gay men, um, the chances of STDs are higher. There is literally mucus everywhere. There's mucus on your penis, on your vagina, on your mouth, on your anus. So I really, really suggest you to please, 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 please have a safe sexual intercourse. What makes STIs um, more likely to catch is the sexual practices that you're engaging with. If you do catch something, please seek professional help. How to have safe lesbian sex, uh, no one seems to use protection. Now I know that I don't look like a lesbian necessarily, but I did live as a lesbian for four years. A lot of um, lesbians believe that you can't catch an STI from having sex with um, another lesbian, but you don't know what the person you're sleeping with does when they're not sleeping with you. I feel very attached to my lesbian identity still now, um, and I had a lot of lesbian sex back in the day, and I still would say to some extent continue to do so. It's a really fraught question as to like what is safe lesbian sex. Um, you can use dental dams. Or as I would prefer to call it, a oral dam, which is basically you know, like a sheet. So, sort of imagine like putting glad wrap over a vulva to eat it out. I wouldn't get your sex ed from porn because for the most part, porn stars are tested regularly and don't seem to use any form of barrier protection. Something that is really simple and not many people um, know about is if you're using sex toys for lesbian sex, a quicker and kind of like sexier way than spending like 10 minutes boiling something is just to put a condom over the sex toy. Getting tested frequently. Like for me, I make sure that I get tested every three to four months. You could also use glove protection. Um, especially when you're doing things like anal play. And silicone gloves and loops for fingering, um, as well as putting condoms on top of any sex toys that you use, especially if they're going to go inside anywhere. Before my partner and I started sleeping together, we, like, we had that conversation of, have you ever had any STIs or is there anything I need to know? How do I navigate sex while being a person with a physical disability? What is accessible, safe, and pleasurable for both yourself and your partner? They're actually amazing tools in regards to accessible or physically accessible sex. Things like 
uh, sex swings, um, ergonomic dildos or vibrators. We got like seats with holes in them um, for like oral play uh, or or other stuff really.